In this video, we're going to work on the repository for our MVVM Jetpack Compose application. And we have a single layer that's the network layer, so we only have one data source. You know what? Instead of talking about it, let me actually just quickly remind you what our architecture diagram sort of looks like. So here we have the diagram that I drew a few videos ago. We have our retrofit service, which is our data source. We call this our data source. In a, in a real application, normally you'd have multiple data sources. So you could imagine like there would be an arrow coming off here, an arrow coming off here to like different data sources, but in our app, we just have a single data source, which is this retrofit service. Now, the data coming from the retrofit service that's being serialized from the network is modeled by our recipe DTO. Previously, this was called recipe entity, but in the previous video, I kind of changed the way that I'm going to be doing the na naming because DTO is a common naming convention for data coming from the network. Uh, basically, data, yeah, data, data coming from the network that's being serialized down to your business model. So, Recipe data transfer object is what that stands for. Then you have the repository, which we're gonna build in this video. Looks like I uh, changed the Y there, repository, there we go. And inside there, that's gonna have a reference to the retrofit service. So it's gonna be a constructor argument in the retrofit or the uh, repository that will then get the recipe DTO, go through this mapper down here, and then it's going to spit out a recipe object. So that's kind of how it's gonna work. Repository will take the retrofit service as a constructor argument, the data goes you know, into the repository, and then the UI is gonna look at that repository. It's gonna be the view model, actually. The view model is gonna take the repository as a constructor argument, but we're gonna be looking at that stuff later. So go into the main package directory, right click, create a new package, and call this one repository. Now I know I've said it many times before, but I'll say it one more time. Usually I like to use use cases because then you can pass multiple data sources into it and really write out the specific use case that you're gonna use. But we have a single data source, which is retrofit. So really it's just too simple to use use cases. I'm gonna be using just a single repository. Yes, I'm gonna be doing another course after this one that's continuing onto it. There's gonna be a caching layer. There's gonna be use cases. There's gonna be a caching strategy. Uh, we're going to be doing some unit tests. That one's going to have use cases because we have, you know, multiple things happening given a certain event. So that course will come after this one. So if you want to know kind of the more advanced implementation, make sure to watch out for that course. Join my mailing list. Go to codingwithmitch.com, sign up, create a free account. It's free, like I said. Join the mailing list and then you'll get an email when that course is published. So we're still going to do this kind of the best practice way just because to go through uh, go through the correct processes. It's just a good habit to have, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna build a, an interface first. So I'm gonna do recipe repository, create that interface, and now write out the functions that this repository will be able to do. So these will be suspend functions because we're using Kotlin coroutines. It's gonna have two functions, one called search. The search will take the token, the the uh, authorization header for the, the network token or the network request. Second parameter will be the page because we are using pagination for these requests. And the third parameter will be the query. So that's the, the thing that you send the server saying, hey, I'm looking for you know recipes with chicken or recipes with whatever. It's gonna return a list of recipes. Now this is important, this return type. Some of you might be thinking, I would return a recipe DTO here. But no, you don't want to do that. Remember, at this point in the architecture, the repository, this is kind of like the UI and backwards. The UI only cares about recipe, recipe objects. The UI should never see DTOs. It should never see entities. It doesn't know those things exist as far as, as, far as it's concerned. You always want to return your, your domain model to your UI. Never an entity, never a DTO. So now the second function will be the get request. Also, it will take the token and the second parameter will be the specific ID, that unique ID for that recipe. And of course, return recipe, not recipe DTO, not recipe entity, only the business model. So that's our repository, or our recipe repository that kind of shows what this repository is capable of. And now we wanna build out an implementation for that recipe repository. So right click on repository again, go to new Kotlin file and call this recipe repository. Now this is another, these are two different naming conventions I'm gonna use. You can do recipe repository implementation or recipe repository underscore implementation. These are two common naming conventions. You can choose whichever one you like. I'm gonna go with the underscore not for any particular reason typically i actually don't go with the underscore but i really want to emphasize that um the this is an implementation of the interface since this is a beginner course i really want this to kind of stand out 
So let me just uh, create that class. I'll close this to give us some more room. And of course we want to extend the recipe repository recipe repository interface that we just created. Now this is gonna give me some warnings because I just added the implementation. So I need to right click on there or sorry, go alt enter on there, select those two functions. And now these are the two functions that we need for this repository. Now we need to add some constructor arguments. So I'll open this up and do private value recipe service and do recipe service. Now we need our mapper. So private value, we'll call it mapper. Now here you could do recipe DTO mapper or you could do the generic, which is just the mapper or what did we call it? I think it was domain mapper, but then you gotta pass the type. So that would be the recipe DTO and the recipe. You could do that also because when we have hilt and we build out this, this dependency, you know, it, it's not gonna matter. I'm going to use the actual implementation. So that means using the recipe DTO mapper. Um, like I said, I don't think it really matters conventionally which one you do. I'm just gonna go with the recipe DTO mapper. So the actual implementation. Now I'm gonna give you some more room to give you a better view and let's work on these functions. Now these are gonna be very straightforward since we've already done kind of all the hard work building the mappers and the DTO and everything like that. So I just wanna do return mapper dot from entity list. This actually, I thought we changed the name of that. Did I forget to change that in the last video? Sh should not be from entity list. If we go into our recipe DTO mapper, the name of this should be, oh, I forgot to change the list names. So we need to change the names of these. Uh, so this one should be two domain. So if I change this to refactor, this should be two domain list, two, two, two domain list. Uh, and then the second one here should be two uh, DTO list or I guess from domain list, from domain list. I forgot to change those in the previous video, my bad. If you're confused, you just look at the return type. So this one's returning a list of domain models. So we're going to, uh, to domain list. Oops, that should be to domain list. And this one is uh, returning the DTO list. So we're going from a domain list. So now that I fixed that, we can go back to our repository and we should have our correct function name here. And if you're confused about like which function to call, you can actually write it out the long way, which is what I recommend if you're confused. Just do, you know, value, uh, let's just do, uh, call it result, do value result equals recipe service dot search, you know, pass the token, past the page, past the uh, query parameter. And then you can look at that return type. What is that return type? Well, that's gonna be the recipe search response. So of course I need to call dot recipes on there. So what is this return type? Well, this is a, a list of recipe DTOs. So now what I, what I want to return is a list of recipes. So I would just do return mapper dot, I wanna return to domain list cause that's the type of list that I'm returning and then just pass that result. So if you're confused, just write it out, but I can write this in one line, obviously. So if I cut that and paste it in there, that's a one liner for this request. Now the get request will be quite similar. We're just doing a different request. So return mapper dot, uh, should be two domain model. So map two domain model, and then just do recipe service dot get do the token and do the ID. That's it for our repository, a pretty simple use case. Again, we have one data source. We don't have a bunch of stuff happening in our app. It's pretty straightforward. And if you wanna be notified when the next course comes out with the database caching, you know, building out, building out a caching strategy, how to use use cases, uh, we're gonna be doing unit tests on those use cases. So if you wanna know more about that kind of stuff, which is a more, more uh, realistic app that we're gonna be building, make sure to go to codingwithmitch.com register an account, it's completely free. Uh, you'll get an email when those that kind of stuff, uh, when I start producing that content. And, uh, and yeah, so if you're interested in that, make sure to do that and check that out. Do not forget to leave some engagement. I noticed that a lot of you are leaving really great engagement, but not a lot of you are hitting that like button. So go down there, there is a like button on every video. It's probably a little gray thumbs up, turn into a blue thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. I noticed that a lot of people aren't hitting that like button. It, it costs you nothing, it's free. Just like this video and this course, it's free. So go down there, hit the like button, and give, give me something, give me something out of this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.